welcome to Create a Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine. It's time for the next episode of our Sketch With Me series. Today I'm going to be working with What a Zoo 2. And for this one, I picked a sketch from our May 2021 virtual crop. I know my printer's running out of toner a little bit, but that's okay. Hopefully you'll go and take a look in the description box, follow the link and you can find the original sketch that way. So it's May 2021 and sketch number three is the one I'm gonna be working with. I just thought these ovals across the bottom were kind of fun. We're gonna have three mats for our pictures also on here. And I am not gonna follow the sketch exactly, of course, because sketches are there to give ideas and we don't have to follow them exactly. Um, this particular sketch was apparently originally a blog post and following the link to the sketch, you can find the blog post as well. But I'll talk about it a little bit about how they were done in the blog post and maybe just some other ideas in case you decide you want to make this page as well. For the sketch, you are going to need your large oval, the largest one with your green blade. You're going to need your 12 inch by 12 inch trimmer and you are going to need a good bit of paper. <laughs> so I've pulled out a bit of a stack and part of the reason is because I liked how it looked in the blog post. She essentially each half strip had a different pattern and I'm sure she was using the front and the back sides of the papers. I am actually going to try it using the same side, but in the meantime, you still need five sheets of paper that accentuate each other well. So first of all, this one is going to be our base page. And then this one is going to be kind of our, we're going to create a section inside here that's going to be 11 by 11. On the blog post she did an 11 by 11 strip around and then she put another piece inside of it that was 10 and 3 quarters by 10 and 3 quarters and I just thought well for that quarter of an inch it just seemed like a lot of extra effort and work for a quarter of an inch strip of paper. So I'm not going to do that. You're more than welcome to, to do that. You know, hey, it's your world, it's your page. And here, it's it's my page, it's my video, it's my sketch that I'm doing, so that's what I'm gonna do. And you can see how it turns out. I also have picked five complimentary papers from our What Is Zoo 2 paper pack. I've got the water print, I've got the zebra print, I've got paw prints, leaves, and the, I don't know, leopard, cheetah, I don't know, it just, you know, I'm sure there, there's other people out there that know all these exact patterns exactly, but you see what I'm using. You'll figure out which page it is, right? These are the back sides of all the pages. And we're gonna have some fun. So first off, we are gonna start by cutting our ovals and Here we go. I have my 13 by 13 cutting mat pulled out already, as you can see. And I'm just gonna use this bottom corner. And of course this means card makers, you are gonna get a card out of me because we are gonna have some scraps, but we are also gonna use some of our papers. This cheetah one is actually gonna be some mats coming up and the paw print one we're gonna be using again as well. So we're gonna go ahead and cut five ovals and then we'll move on. But first things first, let's get this done. Because I thought it would be easier just to get the all these taken care of and then do grab out our 12 inch trimmer all at once because these ovals we're gonna need to cut in half. 
So we might as well have ovals ready to cut while we have our 12 inch trimmer out. You know, I do, I do try to have some method to my madness here. Oops, if I can get these pages apart, here we go. And I suppose, I guess maybe you could layer the papers and try to cut two at once. I'm not quite that daring. Um, one at a time works. <laughs> You know, <laughs> sometimes I wind up catching it by accident. I don't know. If you want to try it, let me know how it goes. All right. So there we go. Those are our five ovals. You can go ahead and put your oval cutter and put your blade away. And I am kind of trying to keep these in an order because I really liked how these looked left to right. I guess I should just line them up on my page this way. Here we go, or on my table. So that way I don't forget that I wanted to use my ovals in this order because like I said, I am gonna be doing some cutting on some of the papers. But first, let's pull out our trimmer and we are going to need the cutting arm with it, so I'm going to go ahead and take away my cutting mat because we're done with that. Okay, put my parchment board where I can get to it because I have a feeling we're going to need it coming up. Um, let's go ahead and cut our 11 inch by 11 inch square here first. So we're just going to take an inch off of each side here. So there we go. We now have an 11 inch by 11 inch squared. Not too hard, huh? And then we are going to cut our photo mats out of our animal print. And with that one, we want them all to be four and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut four and a half inches by 12 first. And then I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna cut four, uh-oh, it was actually four and a quarter. Well, you know what, we're just gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with my mistake. It's okay, so if you want, you can do four and a quarter instead of the four and a half that I did. Um, so it was originally supposed to be a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square. I'm gonna do, hang on, let me think about this one. I probably should do it at the four and a quarter because these are going um, horizontally across the page. So four and a quarter, okay. I can actually get away with doing the four and a half by four and a half. I did the math real quick. <laughs> and since we did our, um, our base square at 11 inches, we can do a four and a half by four and a half square and then a three and a quarter by four and a half twice is what's gonna be left here. So three and a quarter, or at least it's supposed to be, Ah, yes, because then that's what's going to fit inside of our 11 inch square. So then you have just a little bit left over. So these are going to run horizontally across our page coming up. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll see when it, we get in action here. Um, okay, so now we need to cut these in half. And I don't think we can do the circle trick, no, for our ovals. So let me see how wide were these. So it's two and a half, so it should be one and a quarter is where the center of our oval should be, yes. And you can kind of see how that lines up nicely. Both of the wider ends of our oval are pretty much lined up at this one and a quarter mark on both sides of our cutting blade. There we go. So now the other thing in the blog post regarding the sketch, let me find the sketch here. 
The other thing it said was to cut off an extra quarter of an inch from the inside of the oval. I guess so that way you can create the separation and get this extra little strip. I'm wondering if because we took out this extra piece, if we might have enough to not have to do that extra step, we'll find out. But I'm also thinking of, cause I don't really, I don't know. I'm gonna probably do my ovals kind of just whole, like the same, the same pattern, but with this segregated look to it. So I'm kind of mixing it up a little bit. Usually um, I'm all about mixing up the patterns, but you know, I'm also funny about color and like the flow of things. And so I'm gonna try it this way and see how it works out. If we don't like it, we can always switch it up. But in my mind, that's kind of how I'm seeing the sketch this time is I really like the idea of actually having the same pattern but yet separate and continuing that continuity. So I don't know. We'll see. If you want to mix it up, if whatever paper you're using works better with different patterns mixed together, then go for it. I, I do like the mixed pattern look. With this particular paper set, I just liked the idea of keeping it a little bit more, I don't know, cohesive and together. I just think that the colors worked better that way as well without having too, too much going on. Oh, you know what? I forgot to cut my other strips. So once I'm done with these ovals, I am gonna pull back out my other paper. Wait, where's one and quarter? Here we go. This is what I get to start talking and then I have to remeasure. There we go. So all of our ovals are now cut in half. I kind of have them still in my order of the way I want them on the page. But across the, um, this part where the title is and up here, um, they used to like a different pattern paper, but also I was thinking this would be a great place for a border sticker or possibly even the, um, the brand new uh, bamboo punch which unfortunately I don't have, but I just thought that would be a great idea to use for this strip going across above and below our pictures and above our ovals. So we'll look at it, we'll talk about it later. Uh, so instead we're gonna do a one inch strip out of our paw print here, and we're gonna do it twice, and then we're gonna cut it down to 11 inches, so that way it runs also across the center of our paper without running over. Oops. And then we'll have a couple of fun little paw print boxes for our cards coming up too. I'm just gonna stack these and since it was one inch by 12 inches, we know if we take an inch off of one end of this, it's gonna be one inch by 11 inches. There we go. And we'll use that on our cards coming up probably, more than likely. <laughs> so I think that is all of the cutting we need to do for now. And I do have the um, stickers and the embellishments kind of waiting in the wings here. For once we get to that point, let me set aside all of this extra paper. Oh my goodness, so much extra paper. Hang on, let me get that one out of the way too. Get my base out, I'm pulling out my parchment mat. And you see how cute this is gonna be? I think, I don't think that I miss see, having that little extra thing around it because I love how these little, the, the ferns and the jungle print just really frame out this paper so nicely. I think if we had that extra layer in there, it'd almost be distracting. So, hooray, we saved ourselves some extra cutting and paper. Here we go. Um, oops. Just using my regular tape runner to get this place down. And again, you can pull out your cutting mat again to get this centered. I am going to eyeball it once again, I know. But you know what, it's okay. The whole idea is to get your picture photos on paper. In fact, if we have this little almost L shape in the corner here that you can use almost to help you 
make sure you kind of are even. Okay, we have our strips. I want to get a feel for where these are gonna go. Oops, why would I pull that out of order on myself? Because that's what I do. So here is where our ovals are gonna be. And then this is gonna be here. This is gonna be up here. And then we have our mats with our photo that our photos are gonna go on. And I think this can go up just a little bit further. Yep. And this is gonna kinda of go on there. And I think we'll be good. Okay, so let me place this one first. It looks like it's about an inch down. So let's just ooh, living dangerously here using the regular tape runner instead of the repositionable. It's not that thin, but still, you know. Sometimes, there we go. Okay. One down, one to go. Um, here we go. Oops, I want to put a lot of that one, that's okay. I usually try to use a little bit less, but you know, that's all right too. Because I tend to be frugal with my paper and with my tape runner sometimes here. All right, let's go ahead and place our mats first. And then we'll come back and do our Okay, yeah, you can see where this is just going to run exactly across our page. And it looks like I cut that one just ever so slightly at an angle, so I need to see where I cut the other angle. I'm guessing it was here, because it looks like it should go together, right? Yep, okay. So we're just gonna, I don't know why we even cut, bothered to cut those apart because it pretty much fits exactly across there. So up to you if you wanna cut that extra cut or not. There you go. You can learn from my doing this thing. You can just do a 12 inch by four and a quarter or four and a half inch strip to run across as just a single mat and then you can just cut your pictures to fit the long mat going across here because basically I'm essentially piecing this back together. I don't know. Is that right? That's better. Okay. Nope, that's crooked. Okay. Maybe, nope. You know what? Because I, I did these two together, didn't I? That's what I get. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. It's a good thing it's everything's brown and the design is kind of busy. I'm gonna actually do this with this other one. Because you know, sometimes colors bother me and sometimes just being that little bit off bothers me. And that being that little bit off is bothering me on this one, but I think the print is busy enough. It's gonna work out. And I have a feeling it's gonna go this way. Yep. There we go. Well, maybe, maybe not close enough. Let's see if this looks like it fits in better this way. Nope. We're just gonna go this way. Oops, I put this one down too far. Okay. <laughs> Multi-purpose tool time. And here we go. This definitely needs to be up a little bit more. I didn't realize I put that other one about an eighth of an inch over the bottom part. There we go. That looks much better. Okay. This is where I'm saying that just doing one long strip will probably benefit your pictures coming up. So, like I said, learn from my mistake on this one for sure. There we go. Whew. Okay, so I'm gonna place these going across and see if we need to remove that extra strip. It looks like we might need to. Yep, because we can only get four 
And we need to get five because sometimes when there's odd numbers, it's more aesthetically pleasing. And that's what we're gonna need to do because we wanna get our fifth one on there going across. So let's put these on top of each other. Let's get our trimmers back out. And this is a good time for me to talk about on our trimmers. The eighth of an inch line is, so this is our, the left one dotted line is always our, where our blade is gonna run. The eighth of an inch is here, the extra dotted second line of our cutting mat. The quarter of an inch is the end of the gray mat. So when you go to line up your ovals, place it to the end of the gray mat and you may need to use your multi-purpose tool to help you hold it in place. There you go. And there's our quarter of an inch. We are gonna have some fun, interesting scraps. All right. And I suppose you could use just three. It's, it's you know, like I said, it's kind of always better to have odd numbers when you have things like this going across for whatever reason in design it just is more eye appealing or something aesthetically pleasing in general and here we go almost done Two more to go. And last one. go okay so that's our five ovals cut down set back aside your trimmer I'm gonna put down my multi-purpose tool for now I'm gonna grab out the repositionable tape because so far I feel like I'm doing all right but you know here we go so we're gonna start let me let's place them again first and see now how our five look going across our page. And you're just gonna to wanna to angle them slightly from each other. Oops, I guess it helps if I do the same pattern for everything. The right side up a little bit, the left side down a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so this needs to scoot over just a hair. This reminds me of one of those, uh, my project recipe mashups, trying to get all those, um, I think it was Endless Meadows, all those punched parts on the page and the right spacing. Okay, so I think I am going to Give it a go. Looks like this is about right. It's not perfect, but we'll, I think it'll work out as we put them down and actually get them placed with, you just want a small strip, almost like an eighth of an inch between the pieces. Let's see, let's give it a try. So I'm gonna place this first one here. Oops. There we go. Hopefully I didn't put that one too far up down. I think I should be able to get the other one where you see the difference. It looks like that looks pretty good. And our, grab out my sketch again here. Oops. In our sketch, it does look like these are kind of close to the top. It also looks like it's kind of close to the bottom. Maybe I should move this one down just a little bit. Grab out the multi-purpose tool again. This is where it's good to kind of just double check things and that'll give us a little more distinction and when we put our 
other one going up, it'll give me us a little bit of a border at the top and the bottom as well. So, okay. Number two, coming shortly here. And there we go, give it a little bit at the top, about an eighth of an inch in between. Oops, of course, I'm just a little bit crooked. Put this away. There we go. Okay, next is our zebra print. Oh, I like the back side of that. I think that'll actually be cute on a card. Back side of the zebras, these little, these mustard colored diamonds are super cute. I don't think it really worked. I mean, I guess if you really want to, maybe you could make it work on here because you have a little bit of mustard out here, but I just didn't uh, want to make it overly complicated today. our next one. Okay. So I do like, we are getting that pattern going. We're getting the movement going. It's looking good. I'm actually reasonably pleased with this. The only thing I'm not so pleased with is how my strip turned out but you know what like I said y'all can definitely learn from my mistake on that one sometimes they're happy mistakes and sometimes there's ones that bother you maybe later I'll go back and cut another strip off of that page and fix it In fact, I may go ahead and pull out and see how much paper I still have of this animal print because it looks like the this one is the back side of this one. So I probably have plenty that I can go back and recut that one strip. Hang on, this one's crooked. Didn't even need my, must not have gotten enough on there. Didn't even need my multi-purpose tool to get that one up. But I do want to straighten it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I am going to fix this because it is bothering me. And I will use that later on a card or something else. You can see where by using my regular tape runner, it is kind of pulling up a little bit of the paper underneath, but we're just going to cover it right back up. It's okay. I will find a use for that on a card. And what size was that? Four and a quarter or four and a half? Yep. Because I could have taken two ovals out of one of these. I took them out. Of, this was the back side of this one. We could have just used the one sheet that's the only sheet I used the front and the back side of. But you know what, that's okay. So I'm actually gonna do the um, four and a half again, which was my happy little mistake on the first one time here when we were cutting. So this is gonna be four and a half by 12 initially, and then I'm gonna turn it and take this one down to 11. And maybe by having used the two sheets, I wound up having this extra sheet I could cut for my mistake I made and that is going to be so much more aesthetically pleasing for me yep so much better okay so here we go I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the regular tape runner again let's just go with it and let's put this down Okay, there we go. I'm much happier with that than I was with the, the pieces. So 
like I said, they, these pieces will show up on a card, I'm sure. I'll find a use for those coming up. And so back on our sketch, let me pull it back out. And it has um, where you can put your title and some embellishments here. And also a couple of other things around. I just thought this might be actually really fun for some zoo pictures. Um, I think that one's gonna be too distracting, but I liked the animal house and the animal tracks in our embellishment pack. I thought that might be fun with our animal print here. Although actually, I wonder, it might disappear a little. Let's see what else we have. Because we got those paw prints in this one, I wonder, nah, let's go ahead and Think about putting that up there. And let's see. We have this wild sign, which brings in some of our prints from the bottom of our page, which might be kind of fun. And then maybe have just a couple of our um, extra prints here. We have several different types of paw prints in our um, sticker pack here, and we can almost we can pop up a couple because we have this one that matches this. This was from our embellishment pack, and we've got some here, and we can actually put these on foam squares coming off the bottom so it almost is going to look like it's we've got a little animal tracking through our page. Let me grab some foam squares real quick since I have everything stuck to my fingers right now. And okay. Well, there's one. I think it is. There we go. If I can get it to work with me here. Okay. So I don't wanna put it too close to this part because that's gonna have our pictures, but I guess it really won't matter if this is popped up, our pictures won't be. So really it's fine. Oops, Get the back part instead of the other part here. Oh. And we have, I think there's probably even a couple more if you wanted to add, I don't think I might add, well, it's better in odd numbers from what they say. This one has five. You could easily use five of your stickers as well, but I think that's pretty good. Let me get this one turned over and put a little of our repositionable tape on it. There we go. So that way this one's coming in from the top here. And then our wild sign, put a little bit of our regular and a little bit of our repositionable for this ends of this thing, our little banner that's popped out here. These are so cute. I love it. There we go. Whew. All right. Wasn't sure I was going to survive that one. Hmm, you know what, I actually am gonna add two more of the paw prints. <laughs> what, did, what did I say about keeping things cohesive earlier, right? Okay, let me just do these last two. Because why not? We have them, there's five in the top, let's put five in the bottom. And even though the five and the top are a little closer together, it's okay if our other ones are a little bit spaced out. There we go. Okay, that works better. I am very pleased with how it turned out. I hope you all are too. Here's our sketch again, and there's still space for you to put a, a title in down here if you want, or add some journaling in between. 
We, uh, we kind of have put our title up here instead, but you know, like I said, that's why it's a sketch. It's made there so you can switch it up a little bit. And I will have the information on where to find this in the description box. But in the meantime, I am going to get together a couple of scrap cards to show you all in just a moment. I'm back and ready to do some cards. And I've grabbed a couple of our blank card bases from one of our blank card kits that we're gonna use for the base of our cards. I've put together a couple of pieces using our extra bits that I cut up. <laughs> Not knowing any better, I guess. But um, so I took our green leaf page and I cut that into our standard A2 card size because that's what the blank cards are. It's the five and a half by four and a quarter for our card base. And since we had a larger piece of this as a scrap from just cutting the one oval, I thought it would make a really great card base. I'm gonna add just a little bit more tape. Okay, so when I cut this originally, it was at four and a half. I did have to take a quarter inch off the edge of this leopardy giraffe print paper, animal print paper to use on the card front. I'm centering it so you can see the little leaves coming out the top and the bottom. And then what I've done is I pulled out our stickers and I loved the idea of putting this giraffe onto this card. Oops, if I can actually get it off of the page here. And almost kind of turning it into a Where's Waldo kind of thing but I just thought this would be a really cute card for a kid, whether it's for like a birthday party thank you or, you know, just a get well soon type card. I thought the giraffe was perfect for it. And I think I'm even gonna add the little, a little heart as well because it kind of it's nice to let people know you're thinking about them and sending a little bit of love when you send your cards. And since we have plenty of little hearts, there we go. That looks super cute. And I will hold it up for you. And you know what I just realized? I forgot to hold up my finished layout for you. So let me grab that. And we'll work backwards here a little bit. <laughs> Here's this one. Sorry about that. I can't believe I forgot to hold it up for y'all. Anyways, uh-oh, one of my, how did that happen? Oh, you know what? I didn't get my back of my foam square pulled off. Okay, that's just as well I needed to show you all that. I was wondering why that was on the, the zebra print down there. Okay, so there we go. So now I have the close-up of the page. You have the first scrap card with the little giraffe on it. Super simple, um, thinking of you. And now the second card, I'm gonna pull out the base here. And I, what I did was I took all of those extra bits, that, quarter inch pieces that we cut off of our um, ovals and I created just kind of like a stripe pattern and actually this I didn't actually put down yet because I wanted to get my card base down first I guess it must have just having that just a little bit of tape runner left on it decided it was ready to be stuck on I guess that really shows how sticky our tape burner really is if it was put on, pulled up, and put down again. There we go. And then I just kind of created a little pattern because I had um, used the that leopard print paper, like I said, twice. And But I liked the white side up because if you use the, the same paper on top of each other, you're never going to really see it. It's gonna, not really going to show up. And, so I went ahead and flipped over several. This pink one is the back of our leaf paper. And I don't know, it just 
seemed to come together in a, this pattern for me and I wanted to create these little stripes which kind of reminded me a bit of our zebra stripes. And so I thought, well, let's, why not? It uses up scraps, it makes a fun card. Let's put them together. And it's okay if they're not exactly perfect because when you look at these zebra stripes, they're not perfect either. It's okay if they're just off a little bit or if something's a little bit closer and something's a little bit further. It's not a problem. Oops. I think I, oh no, there we go, huh. Yep, okay. Just wanna make sure since my stripes got moved a little bit there that I actually had the pattern I was thinking of because I kinda did it where it matched going in and then centered with, since I had four of these animal print ones, or I'm sorry, the paw print paper since it was the back side of the animal print. Wanted to make sure I had that. And then we had this really fun uh, heart embellishment from the embellishment pack and I just wanted to use that one because it kind of reiterates our stripes. You can do it this way if you want as well, but I liked the idea of doing it the long ways. So let me grab my foam squares again and just send a little love somebody's way. Hopefully it'll give them a smile and brighten their day. And of course, there we go. And if you want, you can pull another heart off of the sticker sheet as well to add to the hearts on here, but I just kind of Again, wanted to keep it a little bit simpler. And there we go. Just another really cute all-purpose card using up both the scraps from my inadvertent mat, <laughs> which I still have one more. Uh, I will probably do one more card with it. And using all these little quarter inch scraps that we cut off of those ovals that, you know, you, you could recycle them, I guess, if you want, but it's nice to have a purpose to use them on and an idea of something to use them with. So there you go. What a zoo too. This is the end. We were done. Until next time. <laughs>